Gary TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And today, we are doing a very interesting subject matter. We are doing wines from Israel that are not kosher. Uh-huh, and that is a very interesting subject matter to me. I think the Middle East, if they could stop fighting and hating on each other and embrace with some love, could actually produce some of the most world-class wines. Now I know that's probably at the least of their concerns because they wanna rip each other's faces off, but that's okay, because what I'm seeing coming out of Israel these days is really impressing me. Lebanon, Syria, producing some interesting wines. And so there's a lot of fun, fun stuff going on. I mean, as we know, Iran is one of the first places in the world to make wine. Um, so. I'm very excited about this show because I think this, once again, changes the wine world, breaks down barriers, makes people realize there's different things going on out there. And for example, Israeli wine that is not kosher is something a lot of people don't realize. A lot of people assume that all Israeli wines are kosher, but that is not the case. There are very few non-kosher Israeli wines in the US but we're starting to see more and more and I'm extremely enthusiastic about tasting these four wines today um, and to see what's really going on here. Mott, what do you think? And that's interesting to you, right? I mean, that's something you didn't really know all the details about. All my fans on your stream, they didn't know all about this. I mean, it's a different kind of thing, Israeli wines that are not kosher. So let's get right into it. The first wine, the Flamme. 2007, unoaked Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay. Beautiful package, by the way. This wine is suggested retail, 19 US dollars. 70% Sauvignon Blanc, 30% Chardonnay. Um, and let's see what's going on from Flam Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay. Let's give it a little rinsey rinse. Some two crazy action figures. Come on, this one scares the piss out of me. As a matter of fact, I mean, really, really does. Let's give it a rinse. You zoomed in on the wine already, right? So you know what, Matt? While I'm doing this, why don't you go bring this to the Ustream folks and see if they know what it is. Battlestar Galactic. Shh, don't tell. All right, let's give this a whirl. All right, what is it? Giving a little swirl, some nice color, nice and light. Let's give this wine a snippy sniff. Very nice nose. I get some kiwi with some sugar on top, maybe even like Splenda, so cut yeah, open a yeah, kiwi and put, right. put a little Splenda on top of it. Very interesting nose. I like it quite a bit. I get a little pear skin on here as well, which is quite interesting. This guy's got like a little afro thing going on, huh? Purple hair. Purple afro. Um, pear skin, little sugar cane, little Splenda on top of a cut kiwi. Gorgeous nose. Really interesting right off the top. I gotta be honest with you, I'm very enthusiastic about this wine. Um, as a guy who loves Sauvignon Blanc, Casablanca chili, Loire Valley in France that really hyped me up um, and I drink quite a bit with show, you know, with oysters and shellfish and things of that nature. Um, so this is definitely, definitely interesting me. Let's give it a whirl. This is gonna end up being a very interesting episode. This is extremely good. Great crispness, exceptional flinty bluestone flavors on the palate. If you gave this to me and told me it was a Loire Valley $30, $40 white wine, I would absolutely believe you. I am completely taken aback by the early start of this episode. You know, they kinda of just look serious package-wise, I have to admit, you know, I know I always tell you don't do that, but. This is really interesting to me. A great lychee fruit component. I get sour grapefruit. You know like sometimes you get a grapefruit that's really, really sour. I get that in this. This really does remind me. It's missing a little of the weight that makes it top, top Grand Cru. Not true, there's no Grand Cru, but top, top single vineyard unstoppable Sancerre. But at 19 US dollars, suggested again, an importer sent this all to me, so I don't have all the details. We don't carry any of these, but they come from IsraeliWineDirect.com. So we got a Mott, link that up. Um, lychee, what is that, goji berries? Lychee fruit, get that over here, Eric. Look at Eric, watching live on Ustream, interacting. This is the new WineLibraryTV.com, baby. This is the new Wine Library TV. Anything can happen now because people you know, are watching. Eric brings in lychee fruit as we're, I mean, Eric, that's just great work by you. Understanding the, uh, Eric will never finish our secret project now. Um, 
lychee fruit, which is nice and prickly, by the way. These are like great dodgeballs. Like, uh, nice catch. I mean, beautiful lychee fruit. That sucked. Um, God, I love lychee fruit. Here, take your bag. God, that's squirted everywhere, all over my office. Thanks, Ma. Um, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, just gorgeous lychee fruit. Absolutely, it's in my eye. Um, absolutely, positively, exactly what's going on in this wine, guys. 19 bones, I gotta go. Flip the switch and go 91 points on this wine. 91 points for Israeli non-kosher white wine to start the Thunder Show. That's a huge statement. That is an absolute big start to this show, and I'm excited about it. It's a big time, huh? That's a big time wine. Flam, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, 07. Huge start. Great wine. Great wine. Peltier, 2007, unwooded Chardonnay. Somebody knows my palate. Unwooded Chardonnay, only 430 cases made of this wine. 13.3% um, alcohol content. It says the Pelter Winery lies in the high basalt land of the northern Golan, Israel. The wine is produced from 100% premium Chardonnay grapes, hand-selected and picked followed by a gentle processing and bottling. Light, medium-bodied, crisp, tropical fruit, long and complex. 21 U.S. bones, 90 points. Daniel Rogoff, who we've mentioned before on our shows, who I'm very high on, as a wine critic, I've really followed a lot of what he's said and have always been kind of impressed. I mean, we've disagreed on wines here and there, of course, we all have our own palates, but it just seems like a real big gentleman. I have a lot of respect for him, and if you're into the wines of Israel, this is a guy you've got to absolutely follow. Um, let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. 21 bones, sniffy sniff time. Nice nose again, I get apple core coming through quite a bit. You know, apple core is when you get apple, but you also get like the seeds, so you get a little of the bitterness. I get a little melon component here, a little cantaloupe action. Cantaloupe never hurt anybody. And I get a little tss, like college freshman year girls dorm room, right? Just like fresh and like, you know, for breezy and just smells good and you're just like, yeah, this totally doesn't smell like my room. You're just happy to be in the room, you know what I mean? So anyway, 21 bones, let's give it a whirl. Again, extremely well made. Very crisp and clean. Again, dealing with a little bit of the minerality that you like to see from Burgundy. Nice sharp acidity. If you're a Riesling fan, I think you can find some nuances here that you'll like. A little light for my palate. Um, just the hair, and it's kind of simplistic. It's got a lot of flavors, but it's a simple kind of flavor thing going on. Just basic. 12 to $15 Bourgogne, Macon style Chardonnay. And so for me, you know, at this price point, mm, you know, not, not killing me, you know, forget about the price point even, I'm gonna go 87 plus points on this wine. I think it's solid, but it's kind of um, generic un -oak Chardonnay. There's a lot of Australian Chardonnay un -oak that I've had in the past that rolls in between 12 and 15 bones that rivals, if not better than this. So a solid bottle of white wine, again, not putrid, but definitely not bringing the thunder for me at a 21 bones, definitely a Paz with seven Zs. But you know, I mean, I was pretty emphatic about a Paz, only because I don't see you spending 21 bones on something like that, Mont. You know, I'm trying to save your cash. Save the wallet. Gas is expensive enough. Bravdo. Cabernet Sauvignon from Samson. Um, 2005 from Academy Youssef Winery. 2005 vintage, 89 points. Daniel Rogoff, 27 US dollars. Professor Bravdo, a faculty member at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem one of the leading modern viticultural scientists in the world, together with his former student, Professor Oded Shoswav, decided to implement 40 years of academic knowledge and establish in 1998 the Kremi Yusuf Winery. The winery and the vineyards are located in the foothills of the majestic village of Kremi Yusuf off the, on the road of, to Jerusalem. 100% Cabernet Sauvignon wine was aged for 12 months. Very fascinating stuff on the back of these labels. You can see how people get suckered in by that. 40 years of academics. Let's make some vibe. Here we go. 
27 US bones. This gives this wine a snippy sniff. A little Cabernet action. Oh, cool package on the next one. Hello, green pepper. Um, feeling the green pepper in a big way coming through on this nose, which is an absolute flavor profile that Gary Vaynerchuk adores. Now, you've gotta know what you're getting yourself into. If you don't like the green peppers, this could be a problem. Let me give it a little more of a sniffy sniff. Oh, this is heavy, heavy greens. I mean, just tons of green pepper. Now I get some basil, little fennel action on the nose as well. Smell this, man. I mean, little oregano. I mean, this is Green City, USA. A little J E T S J. I mean, that green. I mean, it's green, right, man? I mean, this is not blue. This is not giant blue. This is green. Very green. Very green. <laughs> you were looking for a smart comment. <laughs> I thought about it. Black cherries are wrapping around this greenness, so it's kind of like the old Bonkers ca candy. Big ups to Kastner. Bonkers candy, green on the outside, red on the inside because you're getting a lot of green and then you're getting a ton of black cherry. Let's give it a whirl. Very interesting to see where this goes. These are well-made wines. I mean, absolutely, positively well-made. Um, great structure, great backbone, nice tannins, good fruit, solid, solid, um, Bright. Do I want is it is it cherry or is it raspberries? Hold on one second. Bright cherries coming through on the mid palate to the finish. I get a little shaved white chocolate on the back end, which I find very fascinating. It's very green, which is what I like. Definitely something that scares me. Little cucumber and carrot top. It scares me because I think a lot of people would be turned off by the greenness. To me, it's an asset. However, I'm gonna agree right down the line with Daniel Rogoff and go Jericho Cotri in this wine. 89, best receiver you don't know. 89 points in this wine, 27 bones. Again, a pass in my book, but a very solid effort. Very well made, clearly potential here and that's what I'm seeing right off the bat. I mean it is clear to me through three wines that Israel is not fooling around, has absolutely the potential to make world class wines and I'm extremely enthusiastic about what I'm seeing so far through these wines. Very good efforts. Very good. The You know in comparison to let's say the wines from Ohio that I've had you know, just right now in this taping session, you can just see the difference of the terroir, the growing season, the extraction, the quality. I mean, there's just a fundamental difference. Israel's far ahead of Ohio. Let's move on. And finally, Mishar, Vineyard 730, product of Israel, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, 2004 vintage. This wine rolls in at 30 US dollars. Um, 14.2 alcohol content, 89 to 91 points, barrel sample tasting from Rogoff, um, and let's see what's going on here. 30 bones, climbing the ladder. You like how I did this, Ma? It's kind of cool. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, little dippy dip for all the, uh, let's do it. For all the Vaniacs that aren't with us anymore, we miss you. I know we're in 500 now. You might have left at 1.30, you might have just left, but we want you back, so come back. As a matter of fact, any Vaniac who's watching right now, who knows the person that turned them on to the show and doesn't think they watch anymore, suck them back in, we miss them. Let's pour a little out for them. There you go, right on the cork, come on. Zoom in on that. We just drilled that cork. All right, get back here. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Now this has got a big, big nose and very classic California Bordeaux-like, maybe like left bank Bordeaux, big nose. Um, Great fruit coming through on the nose. Very extracted blackberry. I get a mulberry component. Black raspberries coming through. I mean, just a juicy, 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 juicy wine. A lot, a lot coming through on the nose. Great fruit, very ripe, very rounded. Um, there's a little current action coming through. I get a little bark, a little cedar box. Um, very nice on the back. Uh, I get a little brush, a little like side of the road brush, you know, like some twigs and some dirt, a little fertilizer, but it's all like subtle and mixed together and it's not that serious, just a little scent. I get a little bit of that on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. A 
little sweet for me on the residual sugar. Just a little. Once again, four wines. This is one of the most impressive shows. I mean, four quality wines. A little too much oak for me on this wine. A little too much fruit. I'm actually gonna score this wine 86 plus points. Not a great score for a $30 bottle of wine. However, there are a lot of palates that are gonna prefer this wine to the wine we had last. And there's a lot of people that are drinking Jordan and cake bread and wines of this nature from California that this wine absolutely rivals with the fruits and the blackberries and the little sugar count and a little bit of that oak that will absolutely make you like this wine. I am completely and positively impressed with this lineup of wines. Though we only had one wine go over the magical bullcrap 90 point bar barrier, I think you could tell by my tasting notes what I thought about these wines. The quality is immense. This is why I want to go to Israel badly and take shows and get a better feel of what's going on there. The wines are absolutely positively on their way and I fully expect over the next three to five years that the Israeli wines, including the non-kosher wines, maybe specifically the non-kosher wines, are going to be regarded, collected, and sought after. This was a very impressive tasting to me. Eye-opening to me, hopefully to you. It's about expanding your palate. That's what this whole Thunder show is all about. Trying different things and trusting your own palate. You may like these wines different than I do. This is a great example. These wines were all very different. My palate came into play quite a bit on the scoring. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you think. I hope you go out and seek these wines out. They should be sought out and they should be absolutely tried because if you're looking to expand and try new things, these are extremely good efforts, really. Question of the day. What is the best Israeli wine you've ever had? And, because I know a majority of you have not had one, when are you going to have your first one? Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.